In 2021, competitive programming seems to be the center of attention for young developers and students alike. Whether you're attempting to refine your algorithmic thinking skills or preparing to pass a job interview, websites like LeetCode and HackerRank provide a platform for you to do so. But is competitive programming really all it's cracked up to be? Does it genuinely provide valuable insight into, for example, the skill of a candidate for a job? Can it help you learn to code better? As with everything, the answer is nuanced. There's no binary yes-no response to this question. But before you set off on your journey of grinding through every single leak code problem, there are some things you should keep in mind about the efficacy of these techniques. And similarly, from the perspective of employers, before you set off on making competitive programming the focal point of your interviews with candidates, make sure you understand what your objective is first. Let's start with something simple. How did we get here in the first place? Why does everybody seem to be using competitive programming as a benchmark? See, the thing is, companies like Amazon and Google rely very heavily on this deep mathematically based programming knowledge to build their products. Think about how Google can return 1.6 billion search results in 0.8 seconds. That requires a lot of data science and algorithms on both the hardware and software level. And while code optimization is always a plus, the kind of skills they're looking for is complete overkill and most algorithms aren't even used in the real world anyways. Remember that a good modern developer needs to strike a balance between modular, human-readable code and efficient code. Programming languages and hardware have come a long way from the days of old yesteryear, and we no longer need to develop a brand new way of calculating the inverse square root of a number. We can just call the square root method from the math library and inverse it. Of course, this isn't to say that we shouldn't be developing new algorithms and exploring the math behind computer science. Take it from me, I have a degree in mathematical science specializing in data analytics and computer science. We absolutely should, but remember that not everything has real-world applications. No matter what industry you're in, it's generally bad practice to start with the solution and try to fit it to a problem, rather than starting with the problem and developing a solution. In this case, it's bad practice to try and force algorithms in the use of certain data structures into your code to solve a problem when the problem can be solved in a much simpler way with minimal performance impact. Remember, incorrectly using an algorithm or forcing complex data structures into your program can actually slow down performance if your program isn't large scale enough. That is because the entire reason we invented high level programming languages is due to the fact that the vast majority of all the code we write does not need to be high performance. Hardware these days is fast enough that with modern advanced compilers, much simpler versions of code can only make an extra few milliseconds, which does not affect the user experience at all. Therefore, applying more complex data structures and algorithms leads to higher development cost, higher maintenance costs, greater surface area for bugs, and often larger execution times because of the way the code may run at large scales. It simply just does not justify the extra complexity. That's not to say it's all bad though. There are some reasons that these platforms are effective even from the perspective of education. Now remember that especially in the world of tech, practice and experience is everything. You can't learn everything from reading books or taking courses. The vast majority of what you know will come from the projects you build and the code you write. Therefore, platforms that enable you to get problems, write code, and be automatically tested to ensure the correct working of that code can help you practice your coding skills and gain new knowledge. However, this is where the pros end and the cons begin. See, while competitive programming problems may help you practice your coding skills, as we mentioned before, a lot of these problems are not code-centric. Rather, they're focused on very specific algorithms and mathematical solutions to problems. Therefore, a lot of different problems end up having effectively the same algorithmic solution with a different front-end or use case tied on top of it. The problem is that after a few challenges, you stop learning any new code or technology concepts. It becomes a cycle of simply saying, which of the few techniques that I've learned am I going to rewrite to solve this problem? This also means that what you end up training yourself to do is to solve these very narrow, specific problems that all have a few fundamental solutions as quickly as you can without regard for the quality of the code that you write as long as you can pass all the test cases within the time limit that you're restricted to by the platform. Now, some problems are better than others when it comes to this. Take, for example, this problem. Longest substring without repeating characters. You can solve this problem multiple ways, and in practice, the challenge is not only solving the problem, but implementing a solution that makes sense in context. Here's a solution that I built. 
It works by having a pointer to the start and end of the current substring we're evaluating, and moving the start of the substring just ahead of the first occurrence of any character that we see a duplicate of. Every time we have to move the start, we check the length of the current substring, and at the end, we return the longest length. This algorithm is effectively O of n, and runs incredibly efficiently, between 7 and 20 milliseconds on leak code. Now here's a solution my friend built. This one works by manually looping through and building all possible substrings that don't contain repeating characters. This one runs between 200 and 400 milliseconds on leak code. However, the answer isn't as cut and dry as my solution was better because it ran faster. For starters, mine took longer to write and is fundamentally more complex to understand the logic of. And here's the worst part. Once again, no matter the quality of your code, the result that you get if you pass is the same. In my friend's solution, for example, we have stylistic inconsistencies, as well as a situation where we allocate more memory on the stack than we actually need to. In this case, because those issues didn't interfere with the result of the code, leak code doesn't care. However, in the real world, once again, these kinds of problems can cause all kinds of disruptions, from making code messier to introducing security vulnerabilities and code that could rely on undefined behavior within lower level tools. Finally, it's really important to remember that what you see on leak code is really just a fraction of what developers are responsible for in reality. A majority of time as a developer is spent understanding other people's code, digging through GitHub repositories to find what you're looking for, and implementing infrastructure to enable these algorithms that you build to tie into larger workflows and then deploying the code that you write. Judging people's technical skill by how fast they can solve a competitive programming problem doesn't tell you how well they'll perform as a developer. It's like saying an Olympic swimmer would make a great captain in the Navy. Yes, being able to swim is a good trait to have in the Navy, but it's an incredibly different domain and the responsibilities you'd have span a much broader scope. On the same lines, practicing code by solving competitive programming problems will only help you gain that niche mathematical and algorithmic knowledge that makes up the tiny fractions of code that generally aren't what you'll be working with in practice to begin with. The best way to learn how to code is to build. Think of other applications that you use that you're fascinated by, or of problems that you haven't seen solutions for that you like, and attempt to solve them yourself. Going through the entire life cycle of developing a software project will really push you to learn new technical concepts in a well-rounded way. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do make sure to leave a like down below, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you're notified whenever I release content just like this. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it down in the comments section below. And once again, thank you very much for joining.